All right, welcome to the Hanson Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is Tuesday, May 5th, and this meeting is being conducted virtually. And in accordance with the uh, governor's order, um, we have got, we are conducting this virtually. Everything will be done via roll call. Um, prior to the meeting, we did do a roll call to make sure that all members of our, um, of our uh, board are here, as well as the folks that are on our agenda. Uh, so if you would all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, that would be uh, appreciated. I pledge of allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the United, of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if I could, um, I'll ask you to take a moment um, and have a moment of silence um, in remembrance of a um, citizen who passed away last night in a, in a blaze and also uh, for the firefighters and first responders that were there and put their heart and soul into doing everything that they could, um, as well as folks that are dealing with COVID-19 situations. So if you would all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, that would be uh, appreciated. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Eric, I'm getting some kind of weird. Um, yeah, apologies. Okay. All right. Fix that right now. It's horrible trying. It's horrible hearing myself back. Um, okay. Um, thank you. And uh, with that, Mr. Bloss, uh, public announcements and upcoming meetings. Announcements. <clears throat> Volunteers are needed on the following committees Facebook Upkeep Committee, 200th anniversary. Conservation Commission, regular and two associate members, Cultural Council, Disabilities, Economic Development, Finance, Highway Building Committee, Historical Commission, Memorial Day Patriotic Observance, Memorial Field Trustees, North River Commission, and Zoning Board Alternate. Applications for appointment and info on the committee are available on the town website wwwhanson magovernor Upcoming meetings. Tuesday, May 19th, Tuesday, May 26th, Tuesday, June 2nd, and Tuesday, June 9th, all board of selectmen's meeting, Tuesday, June 15th, the 2020 annual and special town meetings. Thank you. Hello. I think we lost him. There's nothing on him. There's no display. Hello. Hello. I'm still here. Um, John. Okay, great. Thank you, um, Mr. Bloss. Um, with that, um, our next agenda item is to um, speak to Tim White, who is our veterans agent regarding the Memorial Day exercises. And in your packet um, should be item one, uh, which is an email from uh, Tim to John Stanbrook outlining some options, uh, potential options uh, for continuing with some form of a Memorial Day commemoration, which I know is extremely important to a lot of people in town and is a longstanding, um, you know, tradition. So, Tim, we welcome you. We thank you for joining us. And um, I don't, if you just kind of want to um, lay up where we're at, what your thoughts are at, and maybe um, what you're uh, thinking in terms of uh, how we move forward. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, well, anyway, you all have the, the email. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while and briefed uh, John uh, a few weeks back on, you know, as we've kind of been monitoring the, the situation and watching Governor Baker's uh, daily briefs. Um, and, you know, time kept on getting pushed back originally from April 6th or 7th to May 4th and now May 18th, and, and the governor is waiting for his task force uh, briefing, which, you know, so it's, it's really all unknown, and it's kind of hitting the, the time here from Mother's Day to, to Memorial Day. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, really in the past, Memorial Day parade is pretty large event for the town of Hanson. 
Uh, mm -hmm. There are a lot of um, spectators on the side of the road uh, through the whole parade route and so forth traditionally. Uh, but now with social distancing and really trying to read the tea leaves and, and you know, beyond May 18th and, and what Governor Baker and the task force may come up with, uh, you know, I mean, it, Governor Baker's briefings strike me that um, they want to be extremely cautious uh, and not have uh, any large gatherings. And so I was trying to think of different ways um, to still hold some type of Memorial Day observance or maybe, you know, satisfy, um, you know, the, the traditional parade, but in a different way. And then, you know, I, I really don't have visibility on the town's budget and, and money situation and so forth. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of put that in as well that, you know, if the town was really hurting for money, I don't have a huge budget, but I know typically on Memorial Day, you know, you're calling in police and fire and, and highway department, et cetera, uh, you know, all on a holiday and special detail and so forth. So. So I, I know there's there's a budget element to it. Uh, anyway, I tried to think of three different ways to to uh, perform the parade or or postpone it. And I'll just real quick, you know, from my email, one was cancel the parade, and that was based off of um, Chief Mitch. Uh, had reported to us that he was on a conference call with all the chiefs of police in Massachusetts, and he relayed to us that 90% of the towns and cities are canceling their Memorial Day parade. What I don't, that's just from a phone call, but I don't know all these other towns and, in, in, you know, what alternative plans they're coming up with. I know some, but I, I really don't know a lot, and everybody's trying to be, um, uh, they're, they're trying to think through this as best as they can to, to do something appropriate. Uh, so one was cancel the parade. Two was um, possibly postpone it. And knowing that we have the 200th anniversary uh, event later this summer, I believe it's scheduled for September 19th, I thought, you know, possibly due to the timing, you know, the hope is that coronavirus is not impacting us as as bad as it is now. And I thought that may be in a, in a nice um, spot on the calendar. You know, I, I know, you know, not knowing a second round of coronavirus that may hit this autumn uh, going into the winter. And I mean, you watch the news and they they talk about the severity in it, and it could be worse and so forth because everybody's back to work and, and whatever the speculation is. Uh, so I thought we could possibly postpone and, and intertwine it with the 200th anniversary. And then uh, third is just coming up with an alternative to actually do a Memorial Day observation, but it just completely in a different way and what I was thinking of is, uh, you know how the Red Sox, you know, they do, after a World Series victory, they do the rolling rallies. Um, we could do something very similar. And I've seen on the news where, you know, police and fire, you know, teachers, they're going through neighborhoods, you know, waving the kids and, and uh, you know, people with birthdays and so forth or whatever the, the important stuff is in people's lives. And I thought we could possibly do that you know, a, a, say a police and fire type escort of um, veterans uh, in their cars and, and say the veterans or, or veterans and family members who are so, they may be living together or socially distancing themselves. And if they're able to drive, you know, they could drive their car and, and we could do a, you know, basically a rolling rally, a train of cars uh, under escort throughout the town on, on maybe some type of parade route. And, and, you know, my vision was that the people would be outside their homes, kind of, they'd hear the noise and, 
and uh, you know wave at the cars and so forth. Um, it doesn't necessarily satisfy everybody. Uh, you know, we have a number of veterans that do not drive. Typically, we uh, have veterans that um, go into the Council of Aging uh, van, and we, we get eight or ten veterans together in the van. Uh, but under this situation, for social distancing, you know, that really isn't a plausible uh, answer. Uh, so I, I, I don't have any great... Um, answer for you know veterans who don't drive who may want to participate unless if they have a family member that they are socially distancing with already uh, and as you know i mean the veteran community and, and specifically you know the older generation they're at they're at severe high risk of mm -hmm. coronavirus um, yeah. and i'm very very concerned of bringing together a, a large gathering or a group for an extended period of time. Uh, and, you know, we don't have a clue as to who may be a carrier and, and near these folks. So, um, and I, I've been to the stores locally and so forth, and I see, you know, half the people with masks on and half without, and, you know, people are somewhat kind of doing their own thing. And I, I think, you know, many are trying to um, socially distance, but still it's, it's imperfect, right? So those were, those are the three options I was thinking of. And, I, and, and we really, there's not a ton of planning time. I, I could get the word out, make a ton of phone calls and try and gather up some folks that would be willing to participate and drive in, in, a, in a column of cars. Um, but I, I wanted to uh, you know, basically let you know these are some of the options. So postponing it to the 200th anniversary, uh, that's a possibility as, as well. I do think there's gonna be a contingent of folks that because this Memorial Day is Memorial Day and, and we should be absor observing it on Memorial Day that they're going to be frustrated if there is any delay. Um, however, you know, everything else in our life has been delayed, you know, whether it's uh, sports, large events, or, you know, Kentucky Derby, like you, you think of every big event and they've all been delayed. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think Tim, you know, they we're at a really weird place, right? I mean, if we really respect, these folks who have served our country, which we do, um, and we really want to honor them, we don't want to be exposing them unnecessarily. And, you know, it's like, if you really care about these people, maybe this is not the year that we're going to push the envelope. And, you know, you're right, people have got mixed responses to some of the feedback, you know, to the, um, you know, to the to the directives that have been put out there in terms of whether they're complying or not. And, and I don't think anything that you do that's going to involve any kind of a parade route at this point in time, you know, I just don't know how we're going to stop people from kind of getting close together. And I, and I, uh, for one, would find it heartbreaking to think that something that we did would unwittingly cause a veteran to get infected with COVID. Um, I, I, you know, I just, that would just absolutely be heartbreaking. Right. Um, so I, I, I mean, you know, I, we may or may not end up having that parade in September with the 200th anniversary. I mean, right, the ball's in play. Nobody really knows what September is going to look like. I wish we did. It would help everybody's anxiety if we had a crystal ball, but we don't. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, I, you could certainly say you want to kick the can up the road to September. Uh, but again, I think you've got a lot of the same issues. Do you want to risk, you know, these folks, you know, getting uh, mixed into the general population? And I guess my anxiety, you're right, because a lot of them are older. And I just think about the high incidence of people getting it. And, you know, and granted, mostly it's a long term care facilities. But, you know, in that age bracket, where it would be like a World War Two vet, um, you know, I, I just, you know, that that would just be horrible. Um, 
So um, let me just, if you don't mind, I'm just kind of kind of go around and see if people have any thoughts on this on the board, if, if you don't mind. May I ask one question be, before you, you go forth with that? Yeah. Um, do you guys, do you have any feedback from the state level uh, of, I mean, has Governor Baker or his task force, have they even mentioned Memorial Day? Because I, I haven't heard anything. And I've, I haven't I've heard one to thing, and I know they're dealing with yeah. it. So many things on a daily basis, but uh, I've listened to his daily briefings that, every that, day, Tim, and I, I haven't heard anything like that. But I can reach out to Josh Cutler and Senator Brady and see if they've heard anything. But I've listened to the briefings that I haven't heard anything. I would say, based on the guidance he's got out there now, with um, you know gatherings of less than ten, and that we haven't opened back th things back up again, and even if we do and we comply with the president's orders for opening back up, uh, it still I think would be a stretch for any for parade, you know, for anything like that, um, right. you know. So, um, and you know, but your the small ceremony, you know, like in my mind, I was trying to think: is there some way that we can just acknowledge without any you know, without without you having, and, and I want to say thank you for all of the hard work that you're doing during this time, because really, um, I think the board would probably prefer that you focus your time on supporting our veterans in the middle of this crazy time versus orchestrating a parade, which may or may not be something that's viable. So I thank you for doing that. And I know you're doing good work as you always do. Uh, but I think, um, you know, we, we just, your idea of maybe that modest, you know, like a, a taps and, you know, laying of the wreath. And obviously it's not all of the glory and splendor of past Memorial Day services, but it's something, you know, maybe that's what we can do for now. But I'll just go around and, and see what others think. Uh, Matt, I assume you are caller five. Yep. Yep. Sorry for whatever okay. reason it cut out. Um, so um, I had a couple quick ideas. Um, just like how everyone's putting out hearts on their front yards to say thank you to the first responders and the nurses and essential employees, uh, maybe we can have a call to action throughout the town to say, hey, you know, put out, you know, an American flag, put out, mm -hmm. you know, whatever symbol that we choose to say thank you to our veterans, thank you to um, all of our foreign services and everyone that serves uh, the country. Um, that might be one option. Um, another idea would be to kind of get the youth uh, more involved is maybe, um, and I know this would be a little bit more like work on your end, Tim, would be to get a list of graves um, that are veterans that may not have been maintained in the past and have families go out on their own in their little quarantine groups and go and, um, you know, plant flowers at a grave of a former um, veteran or whatever it may be. Um, those were just a couple qu quick ideas. Um, I, I share the same um, uh, same thoughts as Laura as bringing crowds together. That might not be good for right now. Who knows with the 200th parade, that might be an opportunity. Uh, with that, uh, that's all I have to say. Well, I think those are fantastic ideas. Um, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, I've walked five Memorial Day parades. I think, Tim, you do a great job. I think last year was probably the best one that I've walked. I just think that it's in these times right now, I think the best thing to do is just to cancel it. Just It's only another couple of weeks away and, um, and everything going on. I know, and that's difficult for you because I know you enjoy what you do and you love what you do. But I think at this point, the best thing to do would be to cancel the parade, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hickey. Hi. Uh, thanks, Tim. Um, Tim and I spoke earlier today, and um, I was actually thinking uh, about it. And with Eric on the line, um, maybe he could shed some light on my idea. Um, because I still, and Tim, I know you said it uh you know, about some people wanting to have it on Memorial Day. Um, and the way you had it set up was a, uh, uh, you know, small get together, a single person playing taps. Why couldn't this be televised, um, you know, with the TV station? 
and where you're running the show, um, you know, do the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, maybe have somebody come in and, and do a prayer. Uh, you lay the wreath. Um, maybe three Boy Scouts uh, raise the flag. Um, and then the bugle are playing taps. And like you said, no guest speaker, no honor guard. But it would still be a, a remembrance on Memorial Day itself. Yeah. I th so he had laid that out as his first option, and I think, and you're right, but you're saying like not just the ceremony, like can we coordinate like so everybody feels like they're there, ha seeing if cable can cover it and like put it out at the same time that it's happening. Exactly, and everybody is watching it at whatever designated time it's going to be, but everybody's watching it in their own home. Mm -hmm. I think that Eric thoughts on that. Yes, um, I'm sure that we could do that. Uh, we do have some restrictions in terms of the sites that we can um, kind of go live from. And I, I apologize, I didn't get 100% of, of your idea uh, just because of some of the logistics of uh, getting back into the call to, to join you. Uh, but I'd be happy to have further conversation after you make your decision in terms of how WHCA can get involved. But I, I do know that there are colleagues of mine out there who are finding ways to, to do stuff. and. I'm confident that we would be able to provide whatever support you need as well. Okay, thank you, Eric. I, Go ahead. I'm Jeff. sorry, Laura. It's it's just an idea that it maybe it could happen, maybe not. But it was just a uh, you know a different idea than uh, canceling everything totally. I like it, Jim, because I think like, yes, okay, we won't all be standing next to each other. And yes, we will miss the camaraderie and, you know, the pageantry of the parade, but it would still be the core of what that memorial parade celebration is about which is the remembrance and the laying of the wreath and the prayer and you know the, the whole ceremony up at the cemetery is really i would say the pinnacle of the event um you know and so i think if we're able to coordinate it being live on cable and we let everybody know yes you're missing out on a parade but at least you're still going to be as a community we can join together and having that moment you know where we're recognizing their service so I, I like it thank you um mr bloss thoughts yeah no wes likes it too if that's if Eric can pull it off and tim i i mean i'd help you in any way if you have something i can volunteer to do and if not I, none of us know about september and the 2020 parade but we haven't we haven't said no yet we'd be odd honored i mean if you we rolled it all in together if that can happen but we don't know until we know but i do think if we could do some something on the day itself that would probably resolve a lot of feelings yeah uh, i agree and but i i also love matt i really like your idea of the flags or something like you know some little i don't know just like a community acknowledgement of uh, recognizing how grateful we are for people's service. Uh, so I, and I think it's fairly simple, right? Most people have got flags. Some people, um, like me, may have more than, you know, their share. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's something we could do. But I also really loved your idea of somehow involving the kids who are going crazy anyway right now. They're stir crazy. And I think parents could very easily work with them to channel their little energy into something positive. Now, whether it's the you know whether it's the uh you know decorating the graves um with flowers or some other thing i i don't know what that looks like but i'm wondering if this is an opportunity to work with our pto and um see if they might be willing to work you know the indomitable melissa balachovic and the other folks on there and see if they might be able to work with us and partner with us and tim and getting the little people involved because that's an extremely important part of the Memorial Day Parade is to have little people understand that people are making sacrifices for their lovely little life that they lead here in Hanson. Um, so I, I really like that, Matt. So um, thank you for all your comments. Um, I mean, it sounds like a small ceremony. It, a small ceremony is very doable. Uh, I think it can be put together relatively quickly um i will just point out uh, one of the comments uh 
I, I think Matt made it about the cemetery. So I typically coordinate with the Boy Scouts, and we have two troops in town, uh, to change out all the burial flags of all the veteran graves. Um, normally we do that a couple of weeks or a week before Memorial Day. Uh, and because of the situation, I haven't reached out to them yet. I'm still waiting on the delivery of the burial flags. I have more than enough in inventory, but I'm, I'm waiting on a delivery uh, and trying to get that. And once I have all the supplies, then I was going to coordinate with the Boy Scouts. Um, so I'm not sure how to uh, integrate um, small kids to do stuff at the grave sites. And my concern, even with the Boy Scouts, the way we do it, because there's so many scouts and their dads typically, um, of still trying to maintain some social distancing at the cemetery. Um, it could be difficult because there's a bunch of trucks get together and I pass out flags and we, we take sections of the cemetery and, and uh, change out uh, all the old flags for the new flags. So um, I, my, I was anticipating talking to the Boy Scout troop masters to, um, to gauge some of their thoughts on what they wanted to do. As far as the small ceremony, I can easily, I think I can easily get um, some Boy Scouts uh, to assist, you know, Pledge of Allegiance, that type of thing, but I really wanna keep the numbers small. And if I'm doing a small ceremony, I'd, I'd at least like to reach out to the American Legion um, to even if they were there and some of them in their uniforms and so forth, but I got to spread them out. Uh, and I just don't want it to grow too much beyond that. No, I, th I think I respect what you're saying. Um, just to be clear, I wasn't suggesting, I don't think Matt was either, that the children would be there when you were having the um, ceremony. I was picturing something like, I don't I don't even know, this might even sound crazy, uh, but like a tree with little flags that, that children have made and they could hang up with their parents or I, I don't know, something just a little project that they could do at home and then just show to the community to show their gratitude. I don't know what that looks like, um, but you know, I was thinking if we throw it out to like the PTO guys and say, hey, can you guys do a brainstorming thing and see how you might be able to involve people so that they're at home doing whatever that little activity is and they can somehow share it with the community. Uh, again, I don't know what that looks like, but um, you know, whether it's, you know, people put out flags at the middle school on the front lawn or, I, or not middle school, but Indian head, you know, or, you know, like individually socially distancing at, at separate times, um, you know, something like that. I don't, I don't know what it looks like. Right, right. Um, but okay, so it sounds to me like, um, you know, we'd like you to very much and appreciate very much uh, your offer to move forward with a small ceremony and to um, coordinate that with uh, Eric and uh, getting that televised, if, po if at all possible, you know, uh, have it live um, and to work with the Boy Scouts. Again, it isn't our intention, Tim, in the middle of all of this to unduly burden you with uh, something else while you're trying to support the veterans um, needs, and, you know, and I know things are really tricky right now. So that's not our intention. But if you feel comfortable that this is in your wheelhouse, and it's something that you're able to do without super heavy lifting, um, I think we'd, we'd love you to do it. No, uh, yeah, this is good. This this is helpful. And, and uh, I can take care of it. And, and uh, you know, Ernie Jutris, I'm sure will assist where he can as well um he's he's on my patriotic observance committee so he's the lone sailor uh so he helps me out as well okay um, so, yeah, did anybody I'll, have... I'll move forward on that okay did anybody have any other comments or questions for um tim um what, well uh one quick thing this is matt um you know just kind of getting back to what can we do at, here at home um you know, kind of going back to the idea of putting a symbol out on your front lawn, maybe, you know, with Tim's blessing here, uh, encourage uh, residents here in Hanson to put a star um, out on their front lawn, a nice gold star, just to say thank you, you know, just to acknowledge that, uh, that, uh, Memorial Day uh, this year as we can't gather to, as a community. Okay, and uh, maybe we can, um, I don't know, John, if you could, you know, 
maybe put that on our website and then we can maybe um, see if police and fire and those guys would be willing to help us get it out, get the message out. And um, if only we knew somebody who was an editor for the um, Whitman Hanson Express who might be willing to put something in the paper about it, um, that would be helpful too. So Matt, are you saying um, a gold star? Did you say gold star or did I mishear you? I'm yep. sorry. Uh, a gold star, yep, a gold star. Um, I think it would be good, great to have uniformity with it. So, you know, a gold star or a red, white, and blue star uh, just to acknowledge on Memorial Day. Okay. Um, Mr. Hickey, did you have something? I thought you unmuted yourself, so I wasn't sure if you. No, I was just uh, waiting for my turn. I just wanted to say thanks, Tim. And um, like I said, Tim and I talked earlier, so I'm good. Okay, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Anything else? Oh. Um, Kenny, all set? Yep, I'm all set. Thanks, Tim. Okay. All right. Wes, all set? Yep, all set. Thanks. Okay, fabulous. Um, okay, thanks so much, Tim. All right, thank you. No problem. And uh, we'll be talking. I'll probably give you an email summary, uh, say, next week or something like that. Okay, stay safe. All right, you too. All right, um, with that, we are moving on to our next agenda item, which is Sean Keeley, town moderator regarding town meeting update. What say you, Sean? Well, I just wanted to uh, generally talk to you guys about uh, when you'd like to hold this. <laughs> you know, when, you know, I haven't gotten a sense from the Board of Health or any of our public safety people as to when, uh, would be the best time to hold uh, a big town meeting. And I'm guessing it will be pretty large this year, given some of the issues that are out there. Um, just just to let you know, I've been talking to Josh Cutler, and, and obviously the, the legislature has been good about passing a bill allowing the uh, moderator and the selectmen to work with public safety people and, and uh, kind of push back the town meeting date 30 days at a time until everyone is in agreement that it's time to, to hold the meeting. Um, but just thought I'd get your counsel on it and, and see what you guys wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, as you know, we had voted to, um, you know, this was early on, so, you know, we didn't have crystal balls. Um, yeah. But um, early on, we had voted to postpone till June 15th, but I mean, I don't know how the other guys are feeling. We'll open it up and, and talk about it, but the closer we're getting to that date, the less certain I am that people are gonna feel comfortable. I mean, at the best of times, we have difficulty getting a quorum, uh, let alone when people are still extremely nervous about being out in public and in an area where it will be incredibly difficult to socially distance if we actually do get a quorum. I become very insecure about the 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 date of June fifteenth. I don't I don't know what it's going to look like then. Um, so uh, those are just my thoughts. But uh, you know, yeah, uh, it it seems early to me too, Laura. I mean, I think it's probably very hopeful that uh, the governor is going to start reopening the state May eighteenth. I I would not be surprised to see that extended out. And, you know, if that happens, then we may have no choice. Um, but even June 15th might be very early. The, the one question I had was, you know, what happens if we get to the end of the fiscal year? And are we going to have thing, agenda items that absolutely have to be done before then? Um, John, I know you've been on some of the... Um some of the advisory but not you know like you've been on calls with uh fellow town managers and town administrators and my understanding is sean that i there's some guidance out there about what is and will not what is permissible and what isn't permissible and i think the rules are being made up as we go as they start to see that we're getting closer and closer to this fiscal you know year-end cliff and uh you know but i don't know john if you had any thoughts on sean's specific question there uh, thank you. Yeah, they um, kind of it doesn't sound right that they're making it up as they go along, but it, it's kind of uh, they they're assessing the situation as we move towards the whatever day that's, uh, that they're talking about. So um, yeah, I mean I, there are some things like special town meeting uh, reserve front. I'm sorry, special town meeting transfers and things like that. 
um, that would have to be done by June 30th under the rules right now. But again, they could, they, uh, the powers that be, the Department of Revenue, the governor, whoever it would be, um, could always suspend those rules or change them as we get closer to that date and pressure mounts. Um, so, I mean, right now it's kind of a wait and see. I, 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 it's not much, I'm not much help, but it's kind of a gray area. Yeah, and Sean, to your earlier um, question about will everything open up on May 18th, Karen Polito was pretty clear at the um, you know press conference. I can't remember if it was yesterday or Friday, and and saying, look, that's the date that we've been given as the um, advisory group to start issuing guidance, but that is not going to be the date that everything opens up. She was pretty clear about that. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that makes perfect sense. I didn't see her statement, but, you know, it just seems like things aren't going to magically open up in two weeks. Right. So, so I mean, I, I, I guess, um, you know, I we've still got the date of June 15th. Um, John, what, do we have a sense in terms of, or maybe Sean, you even know, um, when do we need to vote to change the date in terms of backing into Beth's, you know, timelines and statutory timelines and all that other good stuff. Like what, you know, if we were going to revisit the date of June 15th, what, when would we need to do that by? I'm not sure myself. I'd have to look that up. Uh, maybe Beth has a better understanding. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure either. I, I'm just kind of uh, asking Beth here in the room and she, is looking for it now. Okay. Um, so Sorry, that go said, ahead. oh, go ahead, go ahead Beth. Yeah. Why don't you come up? To the phone? You have to come right up to the mic. Sorry. That's all right. We need 20 days for uh, the registration prior to the annual meeting. Okay, so 20, 20 days prior. So our next meetings are May 19th, May 26th. So at our May 19th meeting, essentially, we'd need to vote something. Okay. Send it. Uh, have another. I'm sorry. Um, Sean, can you mute yourself? Because uh, um, I'm sorry, we're getting background noise here, um, Beth. Sean, can you mute? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, go ahead, uh, Beth. That's okay. You could still um, extend it. We just have another um, reg voter registration. It's not going to hurt anything to have an extra voter registration. But that would be okay, my so and it's 20, it's 20 days before the um, annual town meeting that I have to have a voter registration. Okay. So, but what, when are you printing the warrant and, and all of that? First of all, I don't print the warrant. The selectmen do. <laughs> well, so, okay, you know what I mean. When do we? When do we collectively um, work towards getting the warrant printed? Well, it's eight days prior to the um, meeting. I'm okay. Sorry. Yeah, seven days. So you know, so you still have a week ahead that you could do it. Okay. And in reality, do we usually wait just prior to the meeting no. to print? The, okay. No, <laughs> we do not. Um, we generally do it at least 10 days to 14 to 10 days prior to, but circumstances, we might have to do it that quickly or lately, I should say. Okay. So, because uh, I'm just trying to avoid the cost of having to print another warrant and all that other stuff, um, you know, and trying to minimize the amount of rework on your part, Greer's part, and everybody's part. Um, so, okay. Um, Matt, any questions, thoughts? Nope, I just uh, would say follow the guidance coming from Beacon Hill. Yep. Uh, Mr. Mitchell? Um, last week I was on the MMA meeting and there was talks about um, the governor changing the quorum. So I don't know if they did that, mm -hmm. but there was definitely discussions about um, lowering the quorum for our town meetings. That's all I have to say. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mr. Hickey. I think we're really gonna have to wait until Tuesday, May 19th. Um, if 
you know, the governor's got it to May 18th. Um, I don't think we can really make a decision on it tonight. Agreed. Mr. Bloss? Did out to Jim and went to everybody. Okay. All right, great. So, Sean, I don't know if that, I, I don't know if we gave you much clarity, but we don't have a lot of clarity because so much of this is, um, you know, is uh, evolving. No, I, I fully understand. And, and uh, you know, my, as I'm sure it's true with, with the five of you, my uh, main priority is to have a meeting where people aren't getting sick and we're not transmitting this. So that'll be, we'll do everything that we can. I think the legislature has given us uh, some flexibility. So, you know, perhaps I could plan to join um, join you again on May 19th and perhaps we can touch base and see what's happening then. We'll have a clearer idea. I just worry, um, one point is uh, I worry about the lower quorum. Mm -hmm. um, I, I Quite frankly, I don't think that's going to be a problem uh, for the May, or well, what was to be the May meeting. Um, my fear is that we're going to get a lot of people and there it will be no way to socially distance in a responsible way. Um, I, I think there's going to be enough um, controversial issues that people will want to discuss and that, that people will show up. Um, and, you know, a lower quorum, you know, might be helpful uh, in some cases, but um, uh, typically not with our spring meeting. So no, I mean, you know, it's interesting because I was talking to the town planner yesterday and she said, you know, because this is kind of like right up her alley. And she said, well, um, you know, you could if you had it at, say, the middle school and you still had all of the restrictions about numbers of people and socially distancing and all that stuff. She said, you know, there's no reason why you couldn't have um, people break out in small groups in, in some of the classrooms and then you'd have tellers in each one of the classrooms and have to do some kind of video conferencing. And she had a pretty well thought out plan. I hope we don't go there because it sounded incredibly complicated, but I think it would, um, you know, meet some of the needs. So, you know, I think between now and whenever we have to make the decision, we'll get more guidance and, um, and hopefully some more clarity around this stuff. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, it, it was very comp. The one time we had uh, an overflow crowd, and we had to put people into the gymnasium, and and uh, I had a uh, an assistant moderator, uh, Jim Armstrong, was assisting me that night. Um, I mean, and he did a fantastic job, and everybody, you know, rolled with it. But it was still difficult logistically, and I don't, I'm not sure the people who were in the overflow crowd were heard um, to the same extent that they should have been. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly that's that's a backup plan, but I'd, I'd hate to have that, you know, be the first thing that we jump at. Yep. All right. Well, um, then we'll, we will plan on having you back on the 19th, and we appreciate your offer to do that. And uh, yeah, thanks, for, thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Okay. Take care. Um, and Mr. Stanbrook, we're on to vote to close the June 2020 annual and special town meeting warrant. Is there anything that you wanted to queue up for us in, in that? Uh, yes, thank you. So on the um, on the I, you have the warrant list, uh, the updated one as of last Friday, I think it was or last Thursday, the one on the annual town meeting, uh, one article has been removed. And it was um, a community preservation article that was related to athletic field design that's been removed by uh, agreement of the community preservation people and the school. Um, so that one's re removed. So we're at uh, 12 articles on the special town meeting and 30 articles on the annual. And the only other thing would be um, if you, uh, I think there was discussion last meeting about a deregionalization. I didn't know if you wanted me to add that or not. I did not add that. And if, and if you wanted to add it, I guess this would be the time before we, close, we voted to close. I think it was the consensus of the board, and I believe Mr. Dyer had um, suggested it, that if we even look at that, that we wouldn't do so until probably October, given the fact that we're in the middle of having a conversation about trying to make the regional um, agreement work and the regional school work. Uh, so, I mean, I don't, you know, did anybody feel differently? Kenny, Jim, Wes, Matt? Okay. So I think that's where we landed. I don't know that we, 
I don't remember whether we took an actual vote or not, but I think, but it was the consensus of the committee that, um, you know, that we did not think that that was something that we um, should be pursuing right now. Mr. Bloss, I see you're unmuted. Did you want to say do something? We, do we acknowledge that was it? Is it Kathleen Coakley has requested a re deregionalization committee? Has it acknowledged that she's in contact with the board? She, okay, yes. I, she Has she reached out to everybody? I'm not sure. We have a letter from her. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, given that we've got a letter from Ms. Coakley, is that something that people want to form a deregionalization committee? Which is what we talked about last week. Matt? Um, I, I want to acknowledge uh, her thoughts, um, and I want to say thank you very much for taking the time to write the letter. Um, but at this time, I, I stand with my thoughts from last week that I do not think it would be productive um, at this time to do so, um, as because even if we formed a committee today, I don't think we would have the numbers ready before town meeting um, this spring. So I think if we want to do so, you know, and things fall through in the next few weeks with the regional school agreement uh, committee, then then I would say let's activate that committee. But for now, um, I stand with my thoughts from last week. Okay, thank you, Matt. Kenny? I agree with Matt, not at this time. Okay, great. Mr. Hickey? Same here, although I do appreciate the letter very much. Okay. And Mr. Bloss. Yes, same here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and the same. Okay, uh, so uh, so that to answer your question, John, no, we do not want that added on to the warrant. Um, then, so uh, that said, I, sorry, are you just, looking? For, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, then the, the list you're looking at is the is what we have for the uh, to be voted on. Okay, um, so I will entertain a motion. So moved. so moved. This is Matt. Oops, sorry. Second. This is Matt. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Um, all in favor? Mr. Dyer? Aye. Mr. Mitchell? Aye. Mr. Hickey? Aye. Mr. Bloss? Aye. And Ms. Kemet? Aye. Okay. And then uh, that was for our town annual town um, warrant and then for the special town warrant um, town meeting warrant I will entertain a motion move to approve this is Matt okay can I get a second the second Jim Okay, great. Uh, roll call vote, Mr. Dyer? Aye. Mr. Mitchell? Aye. Mr. Hickey? Aye. And Mr. Bloss? Aye. All right, fabulous. And that brings us to um, our next agenda item. John, did you want to cue that up? Uh, yes, thank you. So uh, this I have the uh, updated wording. Uh, the special town meeting is on the third draft. The annual town meeting that I sent you is on the first draft. That uh, hasn't been, um, um, uh, I haven't got the edits back from uh, town council yet on the annual town meeting's first draft. But uh, the wording that you have is uh, the wording as I have it right now. Uh, some of the items are, I haven't been completely fleshed out yet. Um, but they are all, all on there in some form or another, and I could take any questions if anyone has any. All right, so just to be clear, the vote we just took was to close the warrant. I just want to make sure that everybody is clear on what that vote was. And so now you're asking, the the language isn't finalized, and are there any questions on the actual articles? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Dyer. Not at this time, thank you. Mr. Mitchell. No questions. Mr. Hickey. I'm good. Great, Mr. Bloss. 
Well, it's all over really to me, but I can't see anything that I would say no or change at this time. So I'm fine. All right, and Ms. Kemet is fine as well. I do want to thank um, Greer and John for doing all of the hard work that it takes to put that together and making it look so easy. Um, and just let us know, I guess, John, when you get back, you know, if you get back any material changes from legal counsel and we can, you know, take it into consideration at that time. Uh, so, yes, I will. Thank you. Great. Uh, so that brings us up to our next agenda item, which is town clerk's voter registration and absentee ballot procedures. So uh, is Beth still in the room with you? Yes, she is. Okay, great. So Laura, what is it that you guys want to know from me? As far as um, the election goes, we cannot change the election now. Um, it is now the 27th. That, that cannot be extended. Um, a town meeting might be able to, but election cannot. Um, the election is going to be at the Hanson Middle School. And oh, I, I'm sorry, Beth. That's not what we were really talking about. Um, and uh, we were talking about voter registration and absentee ballot procedures. Voter we're not, we're, yeah, we're not even thinking about any, any postponement or anything at this point. We're just sticking with the dates that we've got um, until we, you know. Uh, but what we were talking about was I, I know like Whitman has been putting something out just in case people don't feel comfortable actually going to the um, ballot, you know, as we get closer to that date, um, you know, what are you going to be, um, you know, having people come in and vote? Are you going to allow absentee ballots? Are we going to be uh, publicizing that so people understand what other options might be available to them? That's really what that was all about. Oh, okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, unfortunately, our ballots have not been printed yet. I believe that um, Whitman's might have been because they changed their date um yes but yep. they did not change the date on the actual printing of the ballots right so their ballots still say may whatever the original date was um and, but the dates are obviously the 27th like ours so we had extended it and we're our, um we're still looking for people to be on the ballot so the ballots are not printed yet so i cannot advertise because i don't have the ballot yet okay and but what I is the date that that closes, um, Beth, in case people wanted to pull papers for anything? Actually, tomorrow is the last date to pull papers. They have to get them back by Friday. I have one set of papers still out there for the three-year planning board. I have I'm waiting for him to return his papers. The last day to withdraw is going to be May 27th. That is okay. when I can actually ask the ballots to be printed. I have due on the... Um, on the website, there is a thing that says about the absentee ballot application that's always on there. But we've also put on there, Greer put it on for me for today, is the early voting. Now, early voting, the um, governor had this, said that we can do early voting for town, meet, uh, town election, which they usually don't do. That does not mean people come into the town hall and actually vote. It just basically is absentee voting again, but with no excuses, because absentee is supposed to... I can't be in town. I physically can't come. Early yeah. voting is I just want to vote. So, so Beth, have, if, if, I, if I'm out there and I want to take advantage of the early voting, absentee voting, how, how do I, I just go on the website and it's kind of intuitive how I do that? Right. On the website, there is an application. You fill out the application. You can scan it to me. I have to have an original signature or you can drop it in the drop box or you can mail it to us. As soon as we get the ballots, we will send them right out. We do have to have them back by election day though. Okay. All right. And so can people put those in the drop box in yes. front? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Great. That's super helpful. Sorry for the disconnect on, on what we were discussing. Um, but thank you. Okay. Any other questions regarding the election? Um, I, uh, Matt, anything? Nope, oh, thank you very much for all your hard work, Beth. Kenny? Thanks, Beth. Mr. Hickey? Thank you, Beth. Stay safe. You too. And Wes? I miss you, Beth. Thank you. Miss you too, Wes. 
All right, thank you, Beth. We really appreciate it. I know you've been running around like a maniac with all the changes and the remote, just you know, remote participation and all that stuff. So, um, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, discussion of town administrator budget reports, Mr. Stanbrook. Hi. Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, I just in your packet, I um, inserted uh, four reports that you may probably have not seen before, but um, this is kind of how I think, which is may or may not be something that you want to know about. But anyway, um, the, the the this is how the the town meet, how I keep track of town meeting. Um, and uh, I'm just sharing with you the way I the, the way I keep track of the data, and um, and if you find it useful, I can keep doing it. I have other reports. If you don't find it useful, I I'm kind of just taking a temperature check as to whether or not these reports are, are something that you'd like to see, or you just would rather have me just keep them to myself. Um, so the, the first report is the one that says Spring Special Town Meeting. Sorry, Town of Hanson. FY20 Spring Special Town Meeting, um, and it just has our 12 articles that, that you just voted to close the warrant on, and the amounts of what they, um, you know, the amounts of, if the town meeting was held today, what the amounts would be. Of course, this is a, a work in progress. Um, it can change from day to day depending on what, what happens. Uh, we still haven't gone through a budget transfers uh, fully with uh, a, a town accountant, Todd Hassett, so um, again, then, you know, this will be changing, but this is how I keep track of it. Uh, if you'd like to see it, I could pass it along, but this is where we were uh, as of 4.30 on that one. Uh, the second one is the FY21 Town of Hanson annual town meeting funding as of uh, April 30th. Again, those are the 30 articles that you just closed the warrant on on the annual town meeting. Again, where the funding would come from, the description, um, and the dollars amount and you know where what funds and what what are available balances to be drawn from um, again just for this is how I keep track of how things go the third uh, document is a general fund town against an FY 21 general fund revenue summary as of June 30th um, I get that's June 30th. hello sorry uh, April 30th um, and it has the revenues of uh, a comparison of last year versus this year uh, revenues are on the top of what you know the source of the revenue and expenses are down below um, the the source of the expense by uh, what type of the expense it is and then there's any explanation or assumption that's being made um, as to where those numbers came from um, as you can see down the bottom um, again seeing this form for the first time might be a little bit difficult to follow but down the bottom is uh, where it says surplus deficit as of April 30th um, it's right now we're at 1.56 million dollars uh, in the deficit and the, the final um, report that I sent to you was the town of Hanson FY 21 general fund budget article breakdown this would be the budget article for the general fund if the town meeting was being held today um, it has each line and how it was voted uh, and how it was voted in the FY 20 budget how it was voted in the 21 budget the dollar difference and then the percentage difference. Um, so I just I wanted to kind of get those out to you. I, I, again, I don't know what kind of reports you used to get in the past, um, but these are the types of reports that I use and I'd like you to at least take a look at them and if you had any comments or if you uh, wanted to see any changes, we could, I, could, I could do it or I, can, I have more of them, but if you don't want any more, I won't give you any more. It's a, uh, just kind of a uh, see where we are and see if you find them useful. So thank you. Well, uh, thank you. Um, they're extremely impressive. And to answer your question, you don't know whether this is what we're used to getting in the past. That would be a resounding no. We have not been getting anything like this in the past. Um, Mr. Dyer, any questions or comments? Um, nope. I want to just echo what you just said, Laura. These are great. Um, if you're doing them, uh, please share them. Uh, if you have to go out of your way, um, then don't worry about it. But if you're using them, I think that would be great to continue seeing this. Yep, Mr. Mitchell. I agree. I think they're great, and uh, I've never seen them before either. So thanks, John. And Mr. Hickey. Uh, yeah, I've never seen them before, but um, yeah, John, I like this. It's easy to read. 
and um, you can actually see the you know the plus and minus which makes it a lot easier and mr bloss yeah but if john if you could do something about that 1.5 million deficit my heart <laughs> would slow down quite a bit but no there it was great no keep it up anytime anything you do like that i want to see we all want to see thank you this is great yeah i mean you really shine mr stanbrook in this these reports they're amazing um, so thank you. Um, it's next on the agenda is consider opening the community garden and the um, Miss Lutz Golden or Golden Lutz, I'm probably killing her name, Evelyn, um, reached out to me and um, the folks up at the community garden there at Plymouth County Hospital are as you know, planting season is starting to begin and they're starting to wonder, could they potentially start planting up there? But they're precluded from doing that because we had voted that all town properties would be closed. And um, I corresponded with her virtually and she said, you know, that she would be able to assure that they'd only go up there in ones and twos and socially distance and that they would be able to implement measures where they're not sharing tools and utensils and ho and the hose and they would you know sanitize and all of that so i reached out to arlene diaz knowing that they weren't going to be having another uh, board of health meeting i think the next one is maybe next week um but I just said, you know, do you have any concerns off of the top of your head? Because I don't want our, you know, board to be voting on something that's going to contravene anything that your board would be doing. And Arlene said that as long as they were able to sanitize and self, you know, socially distance, she didn't have a concern. And it was really us that had decided that we were closing down the town property. So I told, um, you know, her that I would bring it back to the board and we would have a conversation and I'd let her know what the decision was. So. Um, that's really uh, that, that particular topic. Uh, Mr. Dyer, thoughts? I say uh, open it up for sure. Food security is very important for some folks, and this is their one source of getting fresh vegetables at an affordable price. Um, so if Evelyn believes that they can do it in a safe manner, then definitely open it up. Yes, she does. And I might also add, you're right about the f food insecurity. Um, they donate a huge amount of what they grow there back to the food pantry. So I don't think I need to tell you guys they're up against it right now, too. Um, Mr. Mitchell? I'm okay with it. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Hickey? Uh, my only concern is um, because we're all adults here and the people that are going up there are adults is that what happens with the possibility of opening up Camp Kiwani or opening up another area in town? I think um, we, my two cents worth that we would take each one of those things on a case by case basis. But I think Camp Kiwani, um, particularly the beach is under the governor's orders versus like the community garden. That's kind of a gray area, um, you know, and it, so, but that's just my two cents worth. I, I don't know what other people think. Um, okay, um, Mr. Bloss. If Matt says yes, then I say yes too, sounds good. Okay, Jim, I, I, I want to be responsive to what you're saying, though. So, you know, um, I I don't think what I'm suggesting is a carte blanche. Uh, we're opening all of the all of the town-owned properties. That is not the case at all. This is the exception to the rule right now, and the remainder would be as we get the guidance from the governor. There just I don't think there's any guidance from the governor on community gardens. Right, and I don't disagree, and I'm sure he's got his own situations uh or at least the mayor does in the city of boston um you know with with city gardens um yeah. as long as there's you know one or two people up there or, or however it works um you know i'm okay with it when we come to a vote i'm going to abstain um but you know if that's what people want to do that's fine Okay, great. Um, so I will entertain a motion. So moved by Matt. Second by Kenny. Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Dyer? Aye. Mr. Mitchell? Aye. Mr. Hickey? I'll abstain. 
Mr. Bloss? Aye. And Ms. Kemet, aye. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, and next up is accept April donations. And in your packet, you have a list of various donations being made to fire, police, board of health and elder affairs. I will entertain a motion to accept those donations. So moved by Matt. Second by Kenny. Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Dyer. Aye. Mr. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Hickey. Aye. Mr. Bloss. Aye. And Ms. Kemet, aye. Okay, great. Uh, that brings us to our regional uh, school assessment matter. Um, we're not going to go down that primrose path, but uh, the regional agreement committee that uh, Matt and I have both been participating in, um, you know, it's ongoing. Um, I think we're going to have another meeting in two weeks or something, uh, but uh, I just wanted to take back to this board to the full board because it's been Matt and me just you know having these conversations and I just we need a sanity check we need to make sure you know that we kind of know where everybody stands on this and it doesn't really have to be a vote necessarily it just kind of kind of needs some insight from you guys um the last we heard is there's two possible things on the table one camp and Whitman is proposing a that we split the difference between what would be the statutory method and the per pupil method um, and so to it it decreases the hit that we would take this year um, some have suggested that they'd be willing to transition after that to uh, fully statutory at some point um, in the regional agreement uh, and some have suggested that they would want it to be statutory immediately after this year and i just want to know since you know matt and i are talking as part of this regional agreement committee i just kind of want to know where people are at knowing that you know, Matt and I are not the final decision makers. Anything that, that comes out of that regional agreement has to be voted by those selectmen at town meeting, you know, by voters, et cetera, et cetera. But I just want to make sure before we spend any more time talking about it, if this is something that you guys feel strongly that you don't want um, to pursue, um, then I, I think Matt and I would really want to know that. So um, Matt, I don't know if you wanted to chime in and add anything on that. Nope, I think you covered it all. Okay, great. Mr. Mitchell, thoughts? At this point, I think anything is better than where we're at now. Um, so I'd be willing to listen to anything. You know, if they'd be willing to split the difference this year, what would they do next year? You know, would next well, year that, go right up? Yeah, that's the that's the million dollar well the whatever one point five million dollar question. Um, you know that that's the uh, the question is like I said, some people are saying, well, maybe we could go seventy five twenty five in the next year, and others are saying, well, no, if we give this concession this year, um, then you guys need to go right to statutory after that. So I don't have an answer for you because there's different um, camps there, and it hasn't been fully explored and discussed as a committee. But those are just the things we're hearing so far. Right. In a perfect world, I'd love a two to three year progression in a mm -hmm. perfect world, but yep. good luck with that. Well, thank you. We appreciate your vote of confidence. Um, Mr. Hickey? Um, <laughs> Laura, I don't really have enough information because from, and I could be wrong, but the way it sounds like you're explaining it to me is that we're going statutory. No matter how you look at it, at the end, it's statutory. Am well, that is what that is. Well, it all of these things are still being discussed, but um, I think that the group of people from Whitman that are negotiating on this, yes, their objective is to have it be statutory at the end of the day. Right. Now, so whether, whether the, it's when, one I'm sorry. Year. So what it, should I? I guess that's my long-winded way of saying. Now, whether the end of the day is next year or three years from now, none of that has been really discussed. Right. And so, like Kenny had just said, in a perfect world, it's two or three years. But in in that world, in the end, it's statutory. 
that's um, okay. that is number is most likely going to go up every year. Yes. Okay. I'm good. Yep. Mr. Bloss. I just want to remind us that Bruce Young is on this committee too, and I won't go into it, but I know he has concerns with the last meeting. So I expect to hear that he is part of the negotiations and eventually you guys will, I, you know what, I guess I would like to see minutes eventually from the meetings too, to see where everybody is coming from. Um, th there are minutes that are out there. Um, I think, I know that we, we approved the first the first meeting's minutes. I believe there was some discussion and contention about the second meeting's minutes. Um, and of course, we haven't um, met since we had the third meeting. Um, but um, Mr. Young will very much be part of the conversation. Um, but I'm really coming back to you guys because Matt and I represent you guys. So I want to know what your perspective is. And Mr. Young will bring his perspective to the table as well. All right, thank you. Okay, so that was, I think, helpful. So, um, you know, Matt, I, I think we're saying, let's make the, you know, we'll try to do the best we can uh, for the town of Hanson, which has always been our objective. Um, with that uh, town administrator's report, Mr. Stanbrook. Thank you. Um, so uh, the, the board gave me the authority to sign warrants. Um, up to um, was it May 19th, I think it was. May, okay, May, May 19th. So uh, I'm continuing to sign warrants on your behalf, and I signed the following warrants on behalf of the Board of Selectmen since the last meeting. Uh, 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 April 23rd of 2020, warrant 39VD4-23, a negative $6,990 warrant. Um, that was just a correction of an overpayment. That was a vendor warrant. Uh, another one dated uh, April 23rd, warrant 43 for $132,095.90. That was a vendor warrant. Another warrant dated 423, warrant 43PR for $134,807.88. That's a payroll warrant. Another warrant dated April 23rd, warrant 43WH for $25,130.17. That's a payroll withholding warrant. Uh, that's money uh, that's been withheld from uh, workers' payroll, uh, workers' pay, and then forwarded on like taxes, etc. Um, a warrant dated April 30th, warrant number 44 for $230,040.53. Again, that was a vendor warrant, and the major uh, invoice on that warrant was about $208,000 for health insurance premiums for May. Um, Another warrant dated April 30th, warrant 44PR of $129,008.75, and that's a payroll with warrant. And the final warrant is April 30th, again dated uh, warrant 44WH for $24,424.84, and that's a payroll with withholding warrant. Um, and just uh, again, I wanted to get out. Uh, I said this last week, but I'd like to say it out uh, again. To, uh, tell everyone again this week: the town's contact uh, contracted with the firm KMA to assist us with doing a townwide assessment of our American with Disabilities Act compliance. KMA is being paid via a state grant to conduct a public survey on AD access in the town. So, and your the public's input is needed. So, if you could please go to the town's website which is www.hanson-ma.gov and look for the heading ADA Self-Evaluation and Transition Plan Public Survey due May 8th. And uh, please fill out the survey and send it in as soon as possible. Again, you can send it in right then via the link or you could print it out, send it in via, via mail, any way you can get it back. Um, that'd be fantastic. Your cooperation is appreciated. Um, I've also been working with Highway Director Matt Cahill on a plan for the tree stumps on the road in, into and around Camp Kiwani. Uh, Matt's looking at several different options, pricing them out, trying to figure out what, where, uh, what we're going to do with that. Uh, so I am working closely with it uh, with him. When he when we when we come up with a final plan, I will be telling you about it. But right now we're still working on it. 
Um, just an update on the town website, hitting the town's website as my time allows. Um, I've been removing stale information. I've been updating old information. I've been removing old links. And I've, of course that takes time, uh, but that process, but I have been doing it. Um, you sh should be seeing improvements if you are a, a frequent flyer on the town's website. Um, so, uh, but some of the questions that I'd like to put out to the board for another another meeting would be, that, um, what information do you want to see on the website? What do you think is important? Um, again, there are limitations on, on our site. Um, and just one quick one is uh, there's a window where only three items can stay in the window. Uh, so it's uh, on the main page, uh, probably in the middle, slightly to the right. Um, and you can have three announcements or news things. Uh, everything else gets bumped down. Um, so uh, you know, I try to keep the top three things that are going at the moment in that window. Again, it's it's somewhat difficult because a lot of times we have uh, more than three important things happening at once. Um, um, and again, I can also have a, a red banner that can only have one of those. Right now I have that red banner being the COVID-19 information because I feel that's the most important. Um, again, you can only do that once. So um, anything that, but any information that you think is important to that you'd like to see uh, at another meeting, we could just talk about that or you know think about that. Um, I, I, I've, I've taken a lot of uh, stale information off. Uh, I could, you know, as time allows, I can start putting on the information that you want to see uh, that you feel is important. And just finally, um, again, I, I've been saying this uh, at, at every meeting, uh, and I appreciate it uh, that all the hard work that, that uh, everyone in the town government has been doing, um, they've been doing, the, they, they're still making it function as much as possible during this pandemic. And I, I, you know, the fire department, the police department, the, uh, the water, the, the council on aging library, recreation, transfer station, um, keep up the great work, especially uh, the, the fireworkers uh, after uh, last night's tragedy. So um, I try to keep them in, in my thoughts and I hope you do too. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Stanbrook. Um, with that, I will entertain a, well, uh, did anybody have any questions about uh, Mr. Stanbrook's report? Mr. Hickey. Oh, no, I'm sorry, none. Thanks, John. Okay. Um, okay, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved by Matt. Second by Kenny. Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Dyer? Aye. Mr. Mitchell? Aye. Mr. Hickey? Aye. Mr. Bloss? Aye. And Ms. Kemet? Aye. All right. Thank you, guys. Everybody stay safe.